Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank. Hopefully we can get some rain. Not a deluge, but a nice gentle rain would be so appreciated by all the plants and the trees and the people too. And you are a gracious, wonderful Lord providing amazing grace for us because we all sin from time to time, quite often, and sometimes we just need that kick and then we can get the amazing grace. And I pray all these praise and prayers in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. See how easy that was? Yeah. yeah. Here's a natural. Just say the truth. <laughs> how we sit from time to time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> time to time. On that odd day. Sometimes more often. Yeah, sometime more often. <laughs> so, so today we're talking about yeah. heaven, angels, Satan, and <coughs> mixture but it really all fits together heavens angels and what heaven angels mm -hmm. satan and demons oh demons thank you yeah. i didn't hear that and we talk about heaven because that's where we're going to be and we talk about angels because angels are up there we talk about satan and demons because they were up there until satan got a big head and pride took over and god had to kick him out so the Bible promises us an entirely renewed creation. It, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. In Isaiah 66, God tells us, I will make a new heaven and a new earth. As if the, the old heaven weren't good enough for us. He's going to make it even better. And we're also told in Isaiah 65 that all the old things, all the old things that were associated with sin, death, sorrow, tears, sin, uh, pain, suffering, illness, everything that was tied to sin is going to go away. It's all gone in the new heaven and new earth. Part of that's gone because the, the people who like to sin aren't going to be around anymore. They're going to be gone too. It's a place where heaven and earth are going to join together. God is actually going to bring heaven down to earth. We're told in Revelation 21, John says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And a voice from God's throne announced, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be there with them as their God. It's going to be just like Eden. What God intended all along was that Eden be our forever home. But Adam and Eve messed up, and God had to go with the original plan. <laughs> Jesus down to earth, because we can't save ourselves bring the new heaven down to earth, so Eden would be here. Just amazing. When I, when I read that verse, is the dwelling place of God is with me. Even now, Jesus is in us if we abide in him. If we abide in, G in Jesus, he's with us all the time. He's inside of us. So this is going to be even better when heaven comes down to earth. I get to, during the sermon, I get to show my, safe, my favorite picture again, Jesus on the road to Emmaus with the two disciples. And just think, that's what heaven's going to be like. We have the ability to walk with him whenever we want to. Amazing. So what is heaven? You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we don't focus on heaven. We focus on all the other things. Because there's so much to know. And we, it's almost like, well, we assume we know what heaven is. So we... We don't focus on it too much. For one thing, we know that God is up. God is up in the heaven now. Because Jesus tells us, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. So Jesus tells us that the Father's up there. And then Peter tells us that Jesus, once he ascended, he went to heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. So God is in heaven right now. He's waiting for us. Um, and heaven is a place where God makes his his presence most fully known. 
that's where he reigns. And the people that are there already, that's where they worship him nonstop. That's where he just is with his people. Heaven is where all those who believe in the promises of God, where we go awaiting Christ's return. What happens is when we die, we leave this old carcass, this old tent behind. We leave it here, and then we go up to heaven. So what we would call now the old heaven, because we know a new heaven's coming. So we go there and we wait for Jesus' return. Not such a bad place to wait. You know, like we talked about before, there's no purgatory for us. We don't believe in purgatory because it's not a biblical concept. There's no way station for us to wait until we're good enough to ascend into heaven. We become good enough through our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the only thing that makes us good enough. And that gets us into heaven, waiting for Jesus to come back down and God to bring a new heaven and new earth down. Heaven is a real place. <clears throat> so many people, well, the ones that don't believe in God, they can't believe that heaven is real. And unfortunately, when heaven, the ultimate good, isn't real, that means hell, the ultimate bad, isn't real either. And that creates a, another problem because if there's no heaven, no hell, what's the purpose of sin? So there must not be any sin. <coughs> and you see how this goes. Enough of that. <laughs> um, John does a pretty good job of describing heaven. Really good job. Been there. <laughs> it was there. It was there. You know, we a couple weeks ago we watched that movie Heaven something about the little boy who. Heaven is for real. Heaven is for real. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you see one version of that, and it shows almost all the, all the people younger. And some theologians believe that, uh, and this goes way back, that everybody is about the age of 30 in heaven. Oh. Because supposedly that's the it's prime good. of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jesus died. What? I believe. 33. I, I see our younger people going, 30? 30? I don't want to be 30, right? That's what you were thinking, right? Just I do. Just look at shock on her face like, what? And us on the other side of 30 are saying, praise the Lord, I get to go back to 30. Well, they, they, think it, they think it could be 30 because that's supposedly the optimum age. And that Jesus died around when he was 30, 30, 33, around there. So you read that, and it's like, that well, it kind of makes sense. It makes more sense than if we were all eternally young. So It's okay, good sweetie. That's just what some people think God's going to do with these <laughs> Right, okay. right. Well, and if you die younger, then my and nephew was, what, 20-something? Yeah, we don't know. We have no idea, basically. We read scriptures, and God reveals things to us. Uh, and this is one of the things he revealed. Because we don't see in Scripture, nowhere in Scripture does it say, when you pass over to the new heaven, new hell, you're going to, or new heaven, new earth. There only needs to be one hell. When you pass over to the new heaven and new earth, you automatically turn 30. That's not in Scripture. <laughs> so, so don't worry, okay? It's just an idea. It's just an idea. <laughs> yeah. But it does All, say we will be recognized. We will be recognized. We will be recognized. We will have a new new body. And to me, we will be recognized is one of the most important parts. Because to, one of the big things for me is to go to heaven and see those that pass before me. Yeah, all the it's people all we love. Because <laughs> in yeah. order to start talking about that kind of stuff, you kind of tear up a little bit. Yeah. So we won't talk about that. But we will be recognized. And Jerry, that's a very good point. You know, and, and some things that, that John says about heaven, I can kind of take or leave. The city is filled with with the brilliance of costly stones and crystal clear jasper, mm -hmm. you know, streets of gold and all sorts of stuff, I could take that to leave it. To me, that, that doesn't mean that much. To some people, that's a big deal. 
they want to walk into a fancy hotel maybe and see this grand lobby. Uh, it's precious. It, it will be precious and that we know. Is wouldn't heaven be what we would want it to be though? If we want to be by a stream and just... I don't think so. No? Because that would almost be like uh, if we were to make God in our image, to me, I, I equate the same thing with heaven. Because then it would be different for everybody, and nobody would see the same thing. So I don't know about that part, Sue. Hmm. But <laughs> I'd like a cabin by the lake, please. <laughs> I'll make my reservation. And, and there's enough people with that idea that that yeah. might happen. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. He knows the desires of your right. heart. Yeah. And he may give you a place by the street. That may be the place he has prepared for you. That's what yeah, I'm hoping. We have no idea. <laughs> Heaven has 12 gates. Well, that kind of makes sense. 12 gates makes sense. 12 is a biblical number. Yeah. 12 tribes. 12 tribes. 12 apostles. You know, for a while there in Wisconsin, every time we had a Bible study, there'd be 12 people show up, 12 different people, yeah. but it's always 12. So <laughs> 12 is just one of those numbers that keeps turning up. <clears throat> Heaven's also going to be a place of no mores. No more as a no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. No more of that. Just plenty of the good stuff. The stuff we've been waiting for. There'll be no more separation because death will be conquered. <clears throat> That separation that we go through now when a, when a loved one passes away from us, that won't happen anymore. Because we're all going to be up there for all eternity. At least the ones that believe. We have to remember that one important thing. Everyone up there has to believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Pastor, you <coughs> said no more sorrow. When we get up there and maybe our loved ones have gone the other direction, we will not feel the remorse or the sorrow there? We yeah. might we might feel yeah. sorrow for them. Uh, it might be temporary. But as, as long as we know that we've done what we had to do, yeah. okay. then we, we can't feel sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, yeah, what, what of... Yeah. <laughs> we might, we might not, I don't know. I, I think of heaven as a place of, of pure joy. We might miss them temporarily, but we would, if we've done everything we could. One of the uh, books that my Bible teacher at New Hope gave me was The One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. What do you guys think the one thing is you can't do in heaven? Regress. Sin. Sin. Those are all good answers. All very good answers. The one thing you can't do in heaven is you can't evangelize. Because oh. <laughs> everybody's there, oh, that's right? True. That's true. Everybody's there. The, and and the, the, the main point of the book is the time to evangelize. <coughs> this, is, this is our last chance. This is our last chance. All right, there was time before Christ. What about all those people? I've always wondered about all those people. They, they had their faith in God. So... They have, we have our faith in Jesus. They have their faith in God. And so that's that took how care of them. Plus, that's didn't they do sacrifices? Wasn't yeah. that part of that? That's a whole different... That, that doesn't get the job done. Because we know the Day of Atonement, that took care of their sins for that year. The sacrifice of animals, that was a temporary fix. Okay. Even back then. The only thing, but that pointed to Christ, though. It pointed the to reason Christ. for the sacrifice. Or to die. was the <laughs> blood sacrifice pointed to Christ. Yeah. Absolutely, because we talked. To we talked about Bible one hundred one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. In Bible one hundred one, we went through the altar and the blood of the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and how the blood of the sacrifice is sprinkled on the people. So the blood of the sacrifice is poured out for them. It's a substitutionary sacrifice, just like Jesus was, and that blood uh, healed their sins. So, absolutely right, Jerry. It was a foretaste of Jesus' once and final sacrifice. Served a purpose, but the one final purpose is Jesus dying for us. And then, and then prior to the flood, I, I personally believe that, that God still walked with the people. Because if we, if we look at Enoch, uh -huh. how he came down and took Enoch up in flames, and, and uh, Noah, 
you know, his mm -hmm. relationship with Noah. Right. God walks with certain people. God walks yeah. with the godly. He's always around us, hoping that we turn to him. Because God always chases after us. But you're right. God follows us. God walks with us. The best thing is, in heaven, we're going to know he's there. Because we're going to see. So the Jewish people that accepted God, they would be, they'll be in heaven. If we right. There's no reason to exclude them because their faith was in God. Right. Yeah. How about the, the Jewish people nowadays? Their faith is still in God. Well, see, but now Some of the Messiah has arrived. Mm -hmm. See, that's where the difference yeah. is. The Messiah has come. There's no need to wait for the Messiah. Okay? Back then, they believed in God as they knew Him. And they had complete faith in Him. Now, they don't have faith in God. Okay, we worship a Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, since the Jewish people and the Muslims don't put their faith in Jesus, they're not saved. That's the one thing we always have to remember. Faith in Jesus alone is what saves us. It might sound harsh. Yes. <laughs> but, but, I'm with you. but how hard is it? Jesus, remember when they came to here? Mm -hmm. you know how, I it, wonder how how large their oh Jews for Jesus were here. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. It's a good group. Right. It's uh. That's why we. That's why we can't stop sharing the good news. Because we don't want our loved ones not to have this. Okay, also, now, okay, grew up, lived around some Southern Day Adventist people, and they don't believe we go to heaven until that resurrection day. Mm -hmm. The whole just all down here, just level. And they have Until Jesus too. returns and we all mm -hmm. have resurrection day. Right. I mean, that's their. That's their belief system. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of different interpretations of, of the Bible. That's really why we're taking this class now, mm -hmm. to go through Scripture and see the different Scripture that's out there and how these different ideas could come about. But see, to them, I'd have to ask, what did they say when Christ told the uh, other person crucified with him, today you'll be with me in heaven? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what did they do with that piece of Scripture? Google it. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't yeah. Couldn't See, but I mean, that, that does prove the point I'll that as, as we <laughs> die, we do go to heaven. Right. And, and that's, that's you can the. You can stay here if you want to. I know where I'm <laughs> going. Yeah. You, you can wait down here. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go and hang up there. Yeah. Me too. Um, and, and that's, that's why I also stress if, if we want to get a better idea of a solid doctrine, read the entirety of the Bible. And what is the, the constant message? The constant message is, we will continue to fail. We can't save ourselves. Jesus was sent down here to save us because we can't save ourselves. And then the other stuff is just kind of odds and ends. Do we stay down here or do we go up? Do we have infant baptism or adult baptism? Do we have double predestination or not? Those are the things that we can disagree on. And... It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> if they feel that they, they hang down here, that's not one of those critical concepts that we have to fight over. If they were to say that um, Jesus is not God, like the, the Mormons do, that's a problem. And that should be a, an issue for us. That's something we, we can't let go of. Um, what the Bible says about the new earth. Peter tells us, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Righteousness dwells, like I said, because the only people that are going to be there are those that believe in Jesus as their Savior. Those are the only ones that are going to be around on a new heaven and new earth. Revelation 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Now, the sea was important to the Jewish people because they were afraid of the sea. They were desert dwellers. They were shepherds. To them, the sea was something where 
all the C minor <coughs> we're at, the Leviathan. So for John to say there's no longer any C, that means there's nothing left to be scared of. Everything we can see and we understand. Um, in Romans, Paul tells us the creation, now this is, this is interesting, the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Everything God created is going to be renewed and everlasting. Now, I put a little sentence down there. Does that mean we're going to have our pets, our cats and dogs around? I hope so. <laughs> I pray that that's true. Who knows? Who knows? Some people say, well, since cats and dogs don't have souls, they won't be there. This tells me the creation itself. Does that mean all creation? We'll find out when we get there. But we know there will be horses. Oh, <laughs> Christ comes back on a horse. Well, and, and Isaiah does talk about animals being there. Well, in, in that movie, too, we watched, Heaven for Real, mm -hmm. he said Jesus had a horse. Right. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, he's coming back. And in Revelation, tell us Jesus Yeah, he goes, horse. oh, no, he's right. a beautiful horse. Right. What color was he? Whatever color you wanted. <laughs> yeah, <all laughs> well, well, the little and he was, was all the colors. Is that what he said? He horse said all of, the colors. All the colors. A little four-year-old. And, and when we're, that would be the thing about heaven, we won't be able to explain that. Right. You know, <clears> to him, what all the colors mean, maybe it was iridescent. Maybe it was such a fantastic color. We have no idea. Yeah. So... If there's a horse there, there's got to be dogs. Be a dogs. <laughs> or cats. <laughs> or if you like cats, yeah. cats. Yeah. Yeah. Roland talks of wolf lying down with the lamb. Yeah. Also. There you go. So we have reason to believe there's stuff there. There was once a, a, a series of Facebook posts of uh, a Catholic church, and I think it was a, a Baptist church having a, a, a weekly battle between animals being in heaven and animals not being in heaven. And they had this on their uh, their uh, marquee, so I thought it was kind of funny. You had to be there. Um, no more human problems of any type, and that includes everything that's tied to creation. No earthquakes, no, tor no tornadoes, no tidal waves, nothing, because there's everything good. Flies and mosquitoes? Probably not. Either that or they'll be nice. <laughs> Okay, it says paradise, and Hawaii is supposed to be paradise. They aren't over there. They're not over there? Well, they there's no seams. Nope. Well, and again, if there's no more death, there would be no more need for any of the things that, oh, that live true. off of mm -hmm. the dead yeah. animals. That's yeah. good. There would be no scavengers. Yeah. Yeah. No need for scavengers. Or they might be created anew to where they're okay. Yeah. Butterflies. Plant eaters. <laughs> Plant eaters, yeah. yeah. We don't know. <laughs> when we get up there, we'll find out. It'll be like in the garden. It'll be happy flies. <laughs> Maybe they'll pollinate things instead of uh, instead of biting. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> and we get the new bodies, which is which is good. No more no more limping around. No more sprained ankles. No more bad knees. No more bad backs. No sleep problems. <laughs> Everything will be good. Uh, tree of Life. In the Garden of Eden, we, we learned about the Tree of Life, where if Adam and Eve would have...